Hey guys, uh, this is a quick video to show my new squat rack, bench press and pull up rack. So three in one. So I didn't see any video on YouTube on this one. So I thought of making this. This uh, bench, I built it at home. I'll come to this in a moment. This is quite sturdy and there are a few things available with other uh, online sellers uh, which also comes with a bench but I realized that uh, the gauge used is pretty uh, flimsy and uh, that is the reason I decided to I had this is not available online this was not rather so I had to go to the outlet and then uh, pick it up it cost me I think how much 215 Canadian plus tax and uh, here are a few things uh, if you take care of it, it will be easier to assemble. Now, before you begin, ensure you have either a 17 millimeter metric wrench or a 11, uh, this is 17 millimeter. And this is, a, you'll need two. I didn't have two 17 millimeters, so one is a 11, uh, 11 16th. So this is an 11 16th uh, wrench. This is standard. You can use uh, two of this or two of that, but you'll need, definitely you'll need two because it comes with the package. These are the two so-called wrenches you get, but this is not sufficient in my opinion. You can sort of do with these, but it'll be difficult for you to really tighten because the it, uh, it comes with a lock nut and it's pretty uh, so these are the lock nuts you can see there and uh, on this side it's difficult to tighten with the given wrenches so you'll definitely need uh, this one or even a multiplier multi-size uh, people call it as a monkey wrench or a, you know so anything like that or a wise grip but I'd rather use something meant for that one or you can use a you know box a wrench as well a hexagonal wrench and uh, so that is one thing you'll need and before you even start assembling I suggest you insert the legs these are plastic or some sort of a synthetic material insert the legs on these channels on these channels on either side so it comes with two for uh, this end as well as the other end so insert the legs later it will be difficult for you to insert you need either a wooden piece a hefty wooden piece or a mallet to insert these and once that is done so keep these upright uh, this channel and this channel upright and then uh, let me pull the tape the bench this side so once you have kept both the sides uh, like this is the channel it comes till here once you have kept the channel the channels upright and you have inserted the legs here the legs install this crossbar the crossbar this is not uh, you cannot vary the length of this in, in some of the models by different companies you can vary the length here it is fixed so you need to make sure that this rack fits uh, your uh, requirement for the barbell so this is the barbell which we had and I purchased it for this one so you can see the length the total is about I think seven and a half feet so accordingly I purchased this one so Assembly is very simple only two bolts and nuts on the other side and two bolts and nuts on this side and uh, Secure them well Using the wrenches I mentioned and you're good to go. So the legs are in place and Then this crossbar is in place Then you have to install one on this side this one. These are your spotters one and two very essential and before you install you have this plastic oh, don't know what you call that like a sleeve you'll need again a wooden mallet 
or a hefty wooden piece to just tap it in one on this side one on this side and one here and one there so you'll need that and then you install the spotters install the spotters and adjust it to your the required length I normally keep it just so that when the barbell rests here it is just touching my chest or just a little maybe an inch above my chest whatever is comfortable to you and safe install it at that length and of course this one you can raise it it goes up to about uh, six feet plus six feet plus and uh, that is good this height or a little more than this is good for squats for me but if you increase it to the maximum length then bending uh, my legs at my knee I can use this as a pull-up so this works as a pull-up and once you tighten these screws here it doesn't shake it is sturdy so you can use it as a pull-up and at this uh, length this acts as a squat rack squat rack and this at this height this will be a bench rack bench press rack so that's about the uh, gear for fit uh, three in one squat pull up and bench press and you get uh, those pipes to you know put your uh, dumbbell uh, weights the locking pins are very easy to uh, install you just need to you know lift this a little and then pull this out and then again insert it into the right hole and then just hand tight just so that there is no shake so as simple as that so assembly is very simple in fact the only uh, four bolts are those for the crossbar there are there's nothing no other hardware other than these uh, pins now coming to my now coming to my bench for the bench press the criteria was I wanted uh, the distance uh, between uh, these two legs that is because I wanted to in fact I would have preferred a four feet long bench I did have the wood I did have the wood for that but uh, the idea was to you know store it in between as you can see I can store it in between the two legs when not in use that way I don't have to either keep it vertically or any other place it won't occupy any other uh, extra additional area so that was my criteria but if you have the space my suggestion is keep the bench length four feet now this is about three feet and uh, seven inches the length of this is three feet and seven inches approximately the distance between the two legs so this goes in as you can see here so this is a perfect fit now the wood I used here if you have with you uh, three uh, two by four two by four is good enough maybe you may want to even I think two by four two should do one here and one there but I thought it is better to have a two by six as you know it is really not six inches it's about five and a half inches to two of those and uh, rest is all uh, reclaimed scrap wood from packaging material even this I thought of using a packaging material but this was not expensive so I picked it up from uh, Home Depot and then uh, cut it into two so and this again plywood is a quarter inch uh, think a little thicker than quarter inch from uh, packaging material I didn't unfortunately I didn't have a full length and again I made a mistake while cutting because of which there was a the length was short shorter by what was required so instead of leaving a gap at the end I decided to leave a gap in the middle the uh, idea is to fill this gap uh, soon 
I'm planning to when the weather improves one day the weather was good and that is the day I made this one again it has become cloudy rainy and uh, it's cold so once the weather improves I'm going to cut a small piece with the same grain uh, orientation and then uh, glue it here so that gap will go now before putting these top I would say this is more cosmetic I could have managed even without this but since I had it I used the plywood before screwing the plywood top I applied a little bit of uh, wood glue and then uh, just wanted to make sure that there are no gaps and then put in these screws and I'll turn it upside down now so that you can see how I have constructed the legs now here is a side view of the bench and when you're buying this wood just make sure you get whatever length is the straight the straightest I would say because normally even this was a little warped and uh, but I managed uh, and when you and also this is again uh, scrapped uh, scrap uh, reclaimed packaging material all these are reclaimed uh, wood from uh, packaging material just a uh, support so that the legs don't move sideways and uh, this is a good gauge I think this is a 12 or a 14 gauge uh, steel and uh, th these are from an old discarded uh, dining table the dining table top was made of uh, MDF and it was really useless somebody had given it to us and I used to use it as a sort of in my workshop so I decided to cut off the length this was pretty long I think it is still there uh, the length required for a typical dining table I cut it off filed it and then inserted the legs here the end cap and uh, now I measured the distance between the, the edges here and then made a small wooden jig for that and then uh, kept it on this side and then made sure that these both are parallel to each other and then screwed in this uh, cross piece as support I did likewise on this side as well just to make sure that both are parallel I also checked with the spirit level to make sure these are these uh, legs are vertical perpendicular rather and again after that I screwed in this cross beam so that is how I did and here is uh, the bottom view I used uh, sheet metal screws to mount this one and regular uh, wooden screws for this one so these are all Robertson head but you can use whatever is available and this is how I have done and there was I think the floor also was a little uneven little bit so I had to add a little pad here and uh, on these legs these are self uh, sticking it has adhesive adhesive backed small very thin it's less than a millimeter so I had to do that one but now it is sturdy so guys thank you for watching